Hello friends, it's Julie Norman and today we're going to just do a little bit of what I've been up to lately behind the scenes. And if you're new here, I my name is Julie Norman. I put out planner and planner related videos on Tuesdays. I was racking my brain about what to talk about today because the last couple of videos have kind of taken a little bit out of me, a little bit more brain power. I was just not knowing what to do today because my mind is blank, I'm feeling drained and um, but I thought I would show you my uh, next traveler's notebook insert that I'm making and I've got a paper clip together because I have poked the holes if right there there's three holes and I'm going to sew it next but I just haven't found my embroidery floss or whatever I might have to buy one um, but it's all held together so I'll, here I'm going to slide this down so you can we can look a little bit but there's all kinds of different papers in here. I've um, little H the edges on this one. This is from an embroidery book and some old things, a recipe, all kinds of stuff. There's a really fun old map in here too. A crossword puzzle, all kinds of found ephemera. This is from a Silken Sonder. I like those pages. They're just, they just fit in so well. The ones that I didn't use, the music. Some more recipe stuff and just fun and this is from a quilt book inside has a little introduction thing this cover here is actually a file folder that I had purchased a while ago and you know butterflies and flowers for me that is like a perfect matchup so that is what I'm working on I had to change the battery out I knew I shouldn't have been lazy about that anyway I think as I was saying I like the thought of doing a sewn edge binding instead of the glue or staple because I think it's more classy and it will last a little longer because the staple one didn't work because I made it too big. The glue started coming apart. And when I have perfected this, if I'm thinking about selling some because I love the thought of recycling things and making it pretty and new. And this is just really simple and they wouldn't be more like a lot of money because all I'm doing are putting different pages together and sewing them. Finding something fun for the covers. Maybe I like the rounded edges too. I think that gives them a nice finished edge there and that is just about it so they would be very simple journals and different sizes that's why I have these out here too is that I had a couple gone through a few of my boxes if you saw one of my goals for the year is to box sort and I found some old books that I no longer really need or want and I did look them up to make sure that they weren't of like a high value book and the most one of them went for was like five bucks on eBay recently so there's all kinds of like fairy tale images in these and I cut these down. These are going to be the narrow size journals because they fit really well with that. And so here's a narrow book. This is, this will need some trimming because it is slightly larger, but these are just so much fun. Uh, I just love the old kind of the Nordic, the fairy tale, the legend thing, um, just so many fun images. And of course I'll add other paper to it too so that they can have more writing space as well because I really want the journals that I make to be ones that you can journal in and not so much of hidden pockets and stuff and um, that's just the way I want mine to be. The nice thing about these is a lot of these can be uh, unisex where it can be for a man or a woman. Um, look at that cow. It is, you know, fun. So that is what I am up to, and some of these are really nice here too. I'll show you one of the books, and I hope you don't... <laughs> it's okay, but here is one of them. I used to love these books when I was younger, The Enchanted World. And don't worry, these are not in pristine condition. There's a lot of them with, uh, you can see a lot of this edge wear, and there may have been some other wear on them too. That they really, there's a lot of fading. Don't worry about, about it being, needing to be pristine. But the nice thing about this is I'm just going to uh, cut out a couple pages here just to show you why this works perfect for a narrow traveler's notebook. Because when I take one of these pages and I fold it in half lengthways, like that, then 
This is basically the size, the width of a narrow traveler's notebook, which is just a titch, a little bit left over there, which is great because then I can, uh, what do you call it, line them up and chop, you know, uh, trim them all up at the same time when I'm done. So that is like, it's been really a fun discovery here. So then I just cut off, I've, it's eight and a quarter, I believe, on the top. And so that's been my project that I'm working on today, besides getting all my laundry done today. So while I was doing this, I was figuring out what to share with you. The other way I trim this is I've got this old trimmer. I have made a little pink mark right there at the eight and quarter. It is a Sharpie, but they usually can, uh, you can usually erase them or they, they do wear off too. So there, right. Okay, that's, this is what I've been doing today in between being active because you know as uh, chronic issues, I can't go, go, go all day. So I sit for a while and do this and then I get up and fold some laundry or go up and down the stairs. But won't that be a fun traveler's notebook? And you can you still have places to write on this piece of paper. The inside is blank on this one. But I just love recycling these old books. Now, I've always been the type of person who would love to reuse things and make something into something new. So this is just up my alley. So I would love to hear if you've got some projects too. Or would you like a mixed papered traveler's notebook? Or do you, you like just to stick with the pre-made stuff? So that is what I've been doing today. So I'm going to roll right into my postscript today without my PS sign. Because... Uh, it's way over there, and I'm buried in papers on my desk right now. And my postscript is going to be my update to my AIP diet. So I am on uh, in the middle of week three. And so I've been doing this two and a half weeks, guys. Basically having meat, some ve most veggies I can have, and fruit. And I am doing okay, guys. The first week was so awful because I think my body was detoxifying everything and getting rid of it. And I was just, I could barely function. It was really bad. It, was, it reminded me of some of my worst days before I started to eliminate some foods out of my diet, like dairy and stuff. And then after the first week, I started to feel better. And now I can take a shower and not take a nap. I can, I can walk them down the stairs more than twice in a day. So it's a good thing we don't have an upstairs bedroom, that's for sure. But I can do the dishes without um, having pain. That brings me to tears. So it is working, this diet. It's helping to eliminate um, a lot of my fatigue and pain. I still have some left. And another thing that happens, because it's been probably over a year since I have been um, myself, since before my cancer surgery, I'm also probably my, my body's not used to going anymore, so I need to ramp it up now that I'm feeling better to slowly get me back into being in shape and active because it's used to not being active. So that is the update. It is working. If you have any kind of autoimmune issues, inflammation, that kind of thing, I would encourage you to look into it because this here, the autoimmune protocol, sometimes it's called autoimmune paleo diet, has been the greatest improvement in my health, even more than any kind of medication. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. And this is a short one today, but it is um, just what, what I'm rolling with today. I hope to have some more content for you next week. Uh, keep the comments rolling, and I'll see you later. Have a joyful day. Goodbye.